His interesting life and miracles are astonishing to listeners. What else the powers did he have with his miraculous ring from heaven? His wealth and treasure was unseen in the world, so much so that even today, many people are in search of his treasure. Get ready to listen to the extraordinary life of Prophet Solomon. Wind also brought to Solomon the voices he wanted to hear, no matter how far away the voice was. If there was something he wanted to hear about himself, or something he wanted to hear, the wind, with God's permission, would whisper it in his ear. He had gathered under his command huge armies of men, birds, and jinn. He commanded and directed them together. His prayer made him a mighty and just ruler. Solomon also had the ability to work molten copper. He ruled the seas as well as trading with other nations. In the Old Testament, it is claimed that Solomon worshipped idols during his lifetime, which caused him to fall out of favor with God and incur his anger, threatening to take away his rule. But the Quran emphatically rejects these outrageous claims, stating that all prophets are innocent. The jinn under Solomon's command knew that a fiery punishment awaited them if they did not obey his orders. So they reluctantly carried out all the orders given to them. The jinn were building magnificent buildings and constructing pools. Some of the sons of Israel accused Solomon of witchcraft and of building cities by black magic. They wanted to know the reason for his wealth. The demons helped these people and began to teach them how to cast spells. So the Israelites learned how to black magic. God had forbidden sorcery, and Prophet Solomon was definitely not practicing sorcery, but that people could not understand this. The Prophet Solomon, who is thought to have lived for 500 years according to sources, was not only able to direct the winds, but also to speak the language of animals, just like his father David. But Solomon was given the ability to speak with animals beyond the fact that he understood their language. Yes, Solomon had the power to communicate with animals from insects to horses, from snakes to flying birds. He had an army of animals as well as an army of jinns. Solomon, who gathered his army of jinns, humans, and birds, was advancing with his army when he approached the Valley of Ants and heard the voice of one of the ants in the valley. O oh, ants, enter your nests. Don't let Solomon and his army crush you without realizing it. Solomon's kingdom is very great. Hearing these words, Solomon smiled and replied to the ant, No, my reign is temporary. The life of this world is short, but the bliss of faith is eternal. Solomon was on a journey with his army, resting in a valley to pray, when he realized that there was something missing in his army of birds. This was the beginning of the new developments that would shape Solomon's life. Solomon was a bird on a special mission, flying far away when needed, gathering news of approaching armies, telling Solomon and carrying information back to him. This bird also had the task of finding water. When Solomon wanted to perform ablutions, this bird would find out where there was water and inform him. But somehow, at that time, wherever Solomon looked, he could not see the bird, because the bird had gotten away from there and mingled with all the other foreign birds he had met some time ago. Other birds took him and took him to another land. Fascinated by what it saw here as it flew, this bird visited the palace and gardens of a ruler named Belkis. Soon the bird returned and brought news from the palace of this woman named Belkis. At that time, Suleiman was still in the valley, and the bird said to Suleiman, I have learned something that you do not know. I have news for you, and began to tell him. I met a woman who ruled a country, and she was given everything, and she had a huge throne. 
But this woman who had everything, and her people were worshipping the sun instead of God. That is why they cannot find faith. Solomon was very interested in what this bird told him. He said, We will see if you are telling the truth, or if you are one of the liars. Then he wrote a letter beginning with the name of God, and put his famous seal on it, and gave it to the bird. He said, Take this letter to Belchis. The bird took the letter and flew to Belchis's palace, and left it next to her throne. When Belchis woke up in the morning, she was surprised to see the letter on the throne. No one knew how the letter had gotten inside. Belchis, who opened the letter in amazement, immediately shared what was written in the letter with those around her. A very important letter has been left for me. The letter is from Suleiman. It begins with the name of God, said Belchis. Belkis continued to read the letter. Solomon said, Do not defy me. Submit to me and come to me. He was saying that God alone should be worshipped, and he was inviting Belkis to believe in God. Belkis was very rich. She was worried by Solomon's letter and feared for the future of her country which had been defeated. So she planned to send Solomon various gifts. When Solomon saw the gifts, he sent them back and said, What God has given me is better than what you can give me. Realizing that she could not resist, Belchis, the queen of Sheba, accepted Solomon's invitation and set off with her men. Belchis sent a message to Solomon saying, I am coming to your presence and I want to see your religion. Before she set off, Belchis hid her famous throne in the most secure part of the palace. But Solomon knew about her throne and turned to his men and asked them, Which one of you can bring that throne here before Belkis gets here? One of the jinn said, I can bring it to you before you stand up from your seat. Indeed, I have the power to do so. Then the one with God-given knowledge said, I can bring it to you before you open your eyes. And in the blink of an eye, Solomon saw the famous throne of Belchis teleporting in an instant, and then he ordered his men, Make changes to her throne, and Belchis will not recognize him when she sees him. When Belchis arrived at Solomon's palace, she saw water at the entrance to the palace and lifted up her skirt so that she would not get wet as she entered. Solomon replied, There is no need to lift up your skirt. This is a transparent floor made of crystal. Walk on it. Belkis was astonished by the splendor of Suleiman's reign. She was astonished when she walked in. A magnificent throne that looked just like her own. Then, when she found out that the throne already belonged to her, she was amazed how he could come here. I have surrendered with Solomon to God, the Lord of the Worlds. Solomon and Belkis, the Queen of Sheba, were soon married. Solomon had a glorious life full of miracles. He was both a king and a prophet. When he came to the end of his life, a death awaited him that took everyone by surprise. One day the prophet Solomon retired to his room in his palace. The doors closed, and he was left alone in silence when he suddenly realized that there was a young man in the room with him. The young man said, O oh, prophet of God, the peace of God be upon you. How did you get in here? asked Solomon. O oh, Solomon, I am that person that the guards at the gate cannot prevent me. The palaces I enter are silent. The bodies I visit take their breath in death. When Solomon heard this, he realized that it was Azrael, the angel of death. Solomon was standing leaning on his staff and talking to Azrael, while the prophet, whose soul was accepted, was standing leaning on his staff and surrendered his soul and remained standing. Days passed, months passed, and those who saw Solomon standing leaning on his staff left the room without disturbing him. 
no one realized that he was dead. Even the jinns thought that Solomon was still alive, so much so that they continued to do the tormenting hard work given to them by him, which they thought was humiliating. After a while, a woodworm began to gnaw on Solomon's staff, and day after day it rotted. And when it finally broke, Solomon fell to the ground. It was then that it was realized that Prophet Solomon was dead. With the death of Prophet Solomon, the ring on his finger was hidden by God and disappeared. Nowadays, many people around the world are looking for this lost face. Next is the secret of Solomon's ring full of mysteries. Please subscribe and don't forget to like the video if you like it.